Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and today is a very cool day. If you have Gaia TV, the subscription, today my episode with George Nori is being aired. I talk about shamanism and extraterrestrials, and we go deep. And if you don't have a subscription, no worries. I'm going to give you a link in the notes so you can subscribe for free for 12 days. Please watch my show and then check out the other beautiful things that are on that platform. Well, beautiful people, today I am speaking with spiritual gangsta, <laughs> alchemist, healing facilitator and abundance activator, Jerry Sargent. He's the founder of Star Magic Healing. He's a motivational speaker and an international best-selling author. Dare to Dream podcast won three talk radio positive change awards, won the COVR award for best radio and podcast show, Welp magazine named Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and is very high ranking under self-improvement on Apple Podcasts. If you notice, if you're on YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, and you look below, you can see, ooh, membership is now available. So please sign up because that gives me a chance to interact with you privately. And we're going to do some cool Q and A's, hang out. And I just want to let you know that some of the guests are going to be coming on too, and you will get to interact with them privately as well. So it's very worth it. And I can't wait to see your comments and emojis. I am about to roll out in July, a five week shaman healing program. And I want to be really clear because right before this show, I was interviewed on someone else's show and he was a little confused. He thought that I taught shamanism. <laughs> Not really my thing, but uh, to help you heal. Yes, definitely. So this is going to be um, the bomb.com. It's going to be beautiful. Every session you will get to have your nervous system rewired. You will get to clean, clean, clean. You'll get to reunite with you that you really are. People who start these experiences, whether it's a private or a group, they're in one state. And by the time we're done with the hour session, they're completely different. And when they look at me coming out of the trance, I always say, yeah, that's how it's always supposed to be. So join us. The link is going to be down below in the show notes. And if you can't remember the link, then go to my website, debbie-inger.com. And there's a button there for you to click on. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And before my guest comes on, I want to tell you that Jerry and I are speaking on a Galactic Origins cruise. Yes, we are. I'm excited. I'm excited because we're going places in the Yucatan I've never been before. So I'm ready for these sacred temples and these tours we're going to do on land. Additionally, the presenters are really top notch. I'll tell you about that at the end of the show. Also, I'll have the link in the show notes, but I wanted to bring on the spectacular Jerry so you can get to meet him. Maybe you know him already and you want to go even deeper with him. And I hope you do today on the show. So my guest today, yes, indeed, is Jerry Sargent. He's known as The Facilitator, a globally recognized frequency healer and transformational expert who has redefined our understanding of total health and well-being. Through his groundbreaking approach, he merges subtle energy, frequency, quantum physics, visualization, and intention to catalyze profound transformations in the realms of the mind, body, emotions, and spirit. Jerry is the founder of Star Magic Healing and the author of Into the Light, Healing with Light Frequencies, and Activate Your Superhuman Potential. Jerry's personal journey was marked by a profound awakening following a near-fatal car crash, propelling him on a purpose-driven path of healing and enlightenment. Learn more at his website at starmagichealing.org. And with that, I welcome Jerry Sargent to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you here.
Hey, Debbie, thank you so much for having me, sister. <laughs> yeah. It's so great. And I love, you know, so I, of course, I research people before they come on. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm calming my mind to find the first right question because you present in so many ways that I that I have tons of curiosity about. So I know today I want to go some into extraterrestrial stuff with you because that's very important to me. And, you know, also some of the other beautiful things that you're aware of. I saw recently you did a video that I want to hearken on, and it was about massive global awakening. And this was a bit of a wake-up call. And I would like you to share with us what is happening now that we don't know about? What's going on in a global sense that's also impacting us individually? That is this global mass awakening. Yeah, I mean, it's a big question. <laughs> so, I mean, on a planetary level, there are many things happening to the grid structures uh, that are running through the ground, also the grid structures that are running through the ether. And we as humans are plugging into these grid systems and these infrastructures in a, a much different way. The spinal column in the human body is such an important and integral part of our human anatomy. But I, I mean, I call it a magic wand, like the spinal column, the 33 vertebrae, they're plugging into 33 nodal points around the planet in a big way at the moment because of the new grid infrastructures coming back online to full capacity. And they're running extraterrestrial frequencies in into our nervous system from these nodal points that are coming in off planet. So the 33 nodal points, which are in the crystalline grid structures, strategically placed all over the planet, are picking up information streams from, from, from the galaxy and beyond and bringing these frequencies into our planetary system, running them through Mother Earth's ner nervous system, and then we are uploading them into our system. And this is having a massive effect on our DNA, and opening up all of these kind of ancient dormant abilities. So many people are coming back online fully mm -hmm. in terms of uh, t telekinesis, um, bilocation, uh, the ability to communicate telepathically, healing at distance. I mean, all of these things that, you know, have always kind of been thought of as a bit weird and strange for many, many years. They're, become, they're coming right into the forefront of people's consciousness and so many people are waking up to this. So many. There are so many galactic beings that are walking amongst us in, in, in the streets right now. You know, if you've got your third eye tapped in and you've got those high levels of awareness and you're very present when you're moving through time and space, then you can see what really is under the skin of so many so many people and there are so many ets walking amongst us helping us do the grid work helping us raise the frequency and expanding consciousness and helping us change the frequency of the planet so mother earth can kind of regain her crisis consciousness mm -hmm. and i think that's really the main aim right now like we are returning to this christ consciousness you know like in romania they uh, we, we have a lot to do with, with romania but in romania they call jesus a zeus and a Zeus who came to the planet many, many years ago, he was trying to tell everybody that you're all worthy of carrying that Christed light and you're all Christed beings. It wasn't like hand your power over to God, hand your power over to Jesus. We are all extremely powerful beings that have all of that potential inside of us. And we're all starting to realize this. Well, not all of us, that's, that's a big statement, but many, many more people are waking up to the fact that we're superhumans in, in, in these kind of avatar bodies. And these bodies aren't measly and, and weak. Like there's so much potential inside these bodies. I mean, our brain is like a huge, amazing supercomputer. We've only just tapped a little bit of the potential. So right now on, on earth, we've got many, many ETs amongst us. We've got celestial sisters and brothers planets and stars are out in the universe they're all feeding us data information we're uploading downloading and we're coming back online and it's a beautiful experience like the the, the electrical energy that's coming down and the magnetic frequency that's coming up as they alchemize through our body 
it's that holy grail. Like the holy grail isn't something that we can kind of chase. The holy grail is something we alchemize inside of our body. And when we do that, we move into wholeness. And when we move into wholeness, everything just flows. The heart opens. We just explode into joy. And we start to see our sisters and brothers on the earth and not competition. You know, we, we move more into acceptance, less judgment. And the world's just becoming a better place. At the same time, there's all the kind of backlash and and still the stuff going on from the other side trying to stop things and hinder things but we've been in a spiritual war for a very long time but we're kind of moving through that and people are waking up and things are really moving into a higher state of consciousness since you say jerry that we have these also supercomputers inside of us called the brain and the capacity with the body to regenerate itself. And so then with all of these uploads, downloads going on and us alchemizing in the middle, how are people handling it as a whole? Are, are they symptomatic or are they literally upgrading at such a capacity and then just readjusting and flowing with what's happening? Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's multifaceted. So like these frequencies are coming in. What's really important right now for, for humanity is to really do their shadow work. Because for oh so long- Oh my God, I'm sorry. You, know, you and I sp say a lot of the same things. This is like wild. I do it from a shaman point of view, but the words, the message, thank you so much for what you're saying. Please keep going, it's exciting. I like if we don't do our shadow work, as these frequencies hit us, they're gonna bring, okay, the shadow to the surface. And what happens is a lot of people tip into darkness, they tip into um, blame, judgment, anger, you know, fear, because they don't realize that the shadow inside of them is a part of them. And people try and run from it or stuff it back down or don't wanna see it, they don't wanna deal with this stuff. but. If people just dive into the labyrinth of their own heart and they, you know, pick up the courage to kind of face this stuff head on, they realize there's nothing really to face. It's not always easy, but with an open heart and, and, and a clear intention and, and pure focus and patience, you can really alchemize everything. And like the body itself, it's an amazing machine. Like it's designed to self-heal. Okay, so all of this stuff is a natural process. And if we get out of our own way, we can just allow things to take place a lot quicker. It's like when we're doing our healing, you know, we, we never actually really heal other people. Like the body's designed to self-heal and all we can do as facilitators, and that's another reason we call ourselves facilitators and not healers, is because mm -hmm. we're facilitating an experience. We're creating an environment so the other human being can self-heal. And when these off-planet frequencies are coming through, they're also coming up from the earth too, from crystal cathedrals, crystal cities, high frequency grid structures in the earth, mm -hmm. which are pumping up high frequency energy. And if we just allow ourselves to be present and still enough, those frequencies will work the stuff through us. But what we've got to do is when it's working, it, it, working its way through us, is we've got to allow ourselves to alchemize and not judge what is happening inside of us. So many people, when they f f feel this shadow stuff coming up, they're like, oh, you know, they see it in other people. So they blame the other person instead of realizing that the other person is just mirroring to them what's in themselves. And so all they need to do is to say, thank you for showing me this and dive into themselves and do the work. But so many people try and avoid it. Yeah. And, you know, the easiest way to start noticing your shadow, I mean, first of all, think about it, a real shadow. If the sun was shining on you, your shadow would follow you wherever you go, right? So you want to make peace with that shadow. And it's also important in this lifetime, in any lifetime, that the easy way is when you have a lot of stuff around somebody, a lot of, God, they do this, God, they do that, stuff that just really gets under your skin, you have it too, right? If you spot it, you got it. And so it's really important. And I, I have a lot of compassion that people, you know, maybe the first thing that comes up is, well, I'm not a bad person or I never do that. You know, all this resistance to really looking deep. But the truth is we're very complicated. And the truth is, you know, we have an ancient history, a concurrent history and a present history. And it can create things that are in our blind spot and we don't want to pay attention to, but it is the most enormous healing, the greatest freedom one can experience to 
look at your shadow, look at your projections. And also it heals massively relationships. You know, in a spiritual messengers, that's really what we want is to be peaceful and harmonious with others. So I'm yeah, all yeah. about it. Yeah, and, and and like like with this this like co complexity thing, like we we are kind of complex beings, right? But we've been conditioned to be complex beings. The the fact uh, the, what I truly feel is that simplicity is the key, and if we stop judging and analyzing and trying to figure everything out with our head, and and actually start thinking with our heart, this should be for feeling. If we tap into the female right brain and start you know, feeling up here and start thinking down here, we, re the, you know, the door of wisdom opens and we realize that actually it's not so much of a mess. You know, it looks like a great big mess. You know, we see all the stuff that's going on in the world. I mean, you know, if we all bought into the media, we'd just be in a state of fear constantly. But for those of us that have, have, have woken up, most of us have probably chucked our TVs in the bin or smashed them with a hammer or something. And we're kind of using our own internal navigation to, give us the information that we need to expand our consciousness and be, be, be sovereign beings on this planet. But it's really important that we simplify things. If we just breathe deeply, if we just start consciously breathing and living from the heart, you know, we create so much more space between us and everything that's taking place externally. When you're kind of inside your head, you're like a pinball in a pinball machine, bing, 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 bing. You're bouncing off the sides and you go down the black hole at the end, at the bottom. Okay, but if we're conscious, we can realize that we're a pinball in a pinball machine and slow everything down, lift the pinball out of the pinball machine and view reality from a whole different perspective. And when we simplify it and we go back to the basics, stop handing our power over to other people, stop thinking that we can't help ourselves and realize that we've got all the tools, we've got all the, the wisdom, we've got all of the skills. We've had so many incarnations on this planet and thousands and thousands and thousands on other planets and stars, we've been we've been alive, you know, as energy since source, going back billions and billions of years. So we've got so much experience. But the problem is, we're locked inside here, and we're not we're not focused here. We're looking into the external environment for the answers, but you're never going to find them. Like people like you and I and other people around the world doing the work, we can guide people. But the, ultimately, the human beings got to go back into their heart. If they don't go back into their heart, they're never going to go anywhere. And so the complexity rises. But when you go into here and you become still, the complexity kind of dissipates and you realize, actually, none of this stuff really matters. Like, it's just a great big cosmic joke. And if we just start treating it as a game and having a little bit of fun, everything shifts. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. The head to the heart is often the longest journey that many people will take, but it is worth it. Trust me. I want to know, so you are my Lyran brother. I am definitely um, have had many Lyran lioness lifetimes. And I'd like to ask you, what do you know about that for yourself? Do you know any specifics about your Lyran lifetime? And are you guided by the Lyrans right now? And can I borrow them sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I back in 2009, I had a, a, an encounter with a, a, a Lyran that came to pick me. I was in New Zealand meditating in my friend's pyramid in his garden and a space pod landed in the garden. And I brought my light out of my body and went and got inside and we went through a tunnel to Alpha Centauri and um, came out the other side. And I met my liar and family and they gave me a huge download of frequency and this kind of spiralized geometry. And that's what ended up becoming star magic. And the, the being that picked me up, his name was Derekwai. And I, a little while after got introduced to another one called Daron. So Daron and Derek were with me always. And I've always got a few kind of Lyrans in their feline form too. I was part of a tribe called the Kara New Tribe, which were on Avion. And I remember being on Avion and what the place was like. I remember the kind of agriculture and the farming. I remember the temples. I remember multiple tribes, many, many um like humanoid beings with kind of heads that were half kind of humanish and and and, um, and feline. And the men had like, not, not manes like a lion on this planet, but much more hair than you, you, you'd see. The women had, just like the lionesses on this planet, they've got less hair. And um, we were able to dematerialize our body 
take our light out, move into another form. We're able to, to, to manifest just like that with thoughts and emotions. Um, I, I remember wars, like there, there was wars when um, the Draco Draconians came and they had these kind of like um, laser beam, like weaponry. I don't know how to describe it. They were like massive guns, but they fired these like sort of lasers that melted the bodies. And I remember you know, be, being there at the end when it was kind of chaotic and um, it was like a massacre really. And I remember getting on a spacecraft and flying with, with some other, other beings from the planet. They weren't all Lyrans on the planet. Um, there were some avian beings too. And we kind of left on the spacecraft and, and, and flew out into, into the universe and ended up down near um, Sirius. So yeah, I mean, I, I remember sitting in temples there uh, there, 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 there's these emerald temples um, in the Lyran system that actually link up with Orion's the belt. They're like pyramids, but they've actually got a bottom half like an octahedron too. And they also link up with, with the Giza Plateau. It's like there's three sets of them and you can kind of jump through the, the, the portal points on them to actually get back up to the Lyran system, Stargates 10, 11 and 12. And I remember being in these kind of like pyramid structures and... They had they, they were like these crystals. There was like um big set of crystals, uh, and then another set of crystals, then another set of crystals, three kind of um like circles of them, crystals at the top and the bottom. And they pushed the crystals at the top and the bottom, which were, were positive and negative or, or masculine, feminine, and created a neutral point in the middle. And it would suck the crystals into the middle and open up this kind of portal structure. And then you could just literally walk through into another reality field, which could be light years away. So there's a lot of things that I remember. And, and, and these guys, like when I had the trip in, uh, in the spacecraft and they brought me back to Earth, a couple of years later, I started seeing all the codes in the space. And I see them now, like when I'm looking at you on the screen, like obviously there's, there's a laptop in front of me, but I see all the codes in the middle. And when I started seeing these codes, I ended up going to these ancient mys uh, mystery schools underneath the pyramids in Egypt. And I was shown these um, codes on scrolls. And so I... I realized that actually the Lyran frequencies and codes, they've come all the way through multi, multiple dimensions, all the way down to earth, to, to, to Egypt. And these are the codes that we're sharing with star magic. So they're not really Egyptian codes. These, these codes come all the way back, you know, from, from Lyra. So the, 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 the Lyran races have had a massive influence on what we're doing on earth right now, all the way through Atlantis, Lemuria, Egypt, you know, all of these kind of time space coordinates and not just on one timeline but multiple timelines coming billion from billions of years ago all the way down to where we are now why do you think we trusted i mean it's such an amazing story of this beautiful race of beings the lyrans and uh, having the draconians come and pose themselves as you know nice guys and other beings from other galaxies warning the Lyrans, you know, these Draconians are not here for good. They're going to try to take your planet and destroy things. And why do you think the Lyrans didn't look, they were very sensitive, right? They're, they have ancient wisdom. They're the, the original blueprint. Why do you think they didn't look deeper at least to say, well, I'll check it out. Let me see, you know, if I can suss it out, even if it's not face to face to go deep in you know some kind of like these beautiful temples you're discussing go someplace that might have given them access to the truth well they did and there was multiple races on on the planet on on, on avion and so they did go deep and they did the, m many of the beings knew that they weren't good they were gonna they were up to no good no really no one really knew what but they knew that they had bad intentions but there were many like elders is the only way I can describe it, you know, beings within within the tribes that had authority that said, you know, we have to be in our hearts and we have to, to, to be in, in peace and love. And so they trusted and, and, and tried to see the good in the situation. And obviously, you know, it didn't work out very well. I mean, I, I even just, you know, think about myself here on this planet, the amount of times I've trusted in my lifetime. And I knew deep in my soul that it wasn't a good move or I shouldn't trust this human being. But there was a part of me that was like, I just want to see the good in them. And I always convinced myself. And, and you know, I, I've lost many things, you know, people, um, business deals, money, all sorts of things because I've trusted in the wrong way. And I think um, 
that was a massive harsh lesson that had to happen. You know, for whatever reason, you know, we, you've got to remember we're in an experiment too. Like this whole construct is an experiment, not just this universe, but multiple universes, multiple templates. And so all things have to be experienced within the experiment to feed the knowledge back to the creator, to, to know what's right for the next universe or the next universe so we can better it. And until you have the experience, nobody really knows. It's all right in hindsight to say, okay, we really should have done that. But when you've never actually really experienced an onslaught and an attack like that, you don't have it in your framework of intelligence to kind of think this is what they might do, even if you've got that kind of gut feeling. So, yeah. But here we I are. Think, the lions, are. <laughs> the band is back together, right? <laughs> so you just said, even while I'm speaking to you, even though you know there is a computer in front of you and in front of me, that you're seeing codes and I don't know what direction they go. Are you seeing general codes? Are you seeing codes about me? Are you seeing synergistic codes between us? And what do they look like? What's happening? So I, I, I kind of tried to depict these codes in my book, Healing with Light Frequencies. And um, what they look like, the, the best way to describe it is like a parachute, but it's not like a parachute, but it kind of looks like a parachute. So you've got these kind of like, um, horizontal streams of light okay and they're translucent and they're at the top and then you've got this kind of ring of code in the middle and then these vertical streams of light now the horizontal ones there's always more so the the yeah the horizontal ones there's always more of those than the vertical ones so you might get seven or eight horizontals and two or three verticals or there might be three horizontals and one vertical and so it's kind of like that shape so it's like a bit like a parachute and what happens is these codes move through the space and they, they create a spiral and these spirals are everywhere. Like they're everywhere. And what we do with star magic is we use these codes to heal people. So different codes carry different frequencies and you can just ask and set intentions and command these codes for different things. So there are codes that I would use for you or for someone else. If I was going to work on them, there'd be codes that I'd work, use for myself, but the codes are intelligent. So once you plug into a human being's hologram that you're going to work on to facilitate the healing, the codes, they're 10 steps ahead of the game. So they already know. So all you've got to do is just ask and they'll be there and you just run them. And the healing takes place. Once those spirals start to go through the body, it catalyzes the whole chain reaction of stuff internally to do with the heart, to do with the spinal column, the tree of life, Cathara grid, to do with the connection to your multidimensional Merkaba field. All of these things kind of plug into each other. And again, this alchemizes this holy grail, which brings the, the electrical energy down through Stargate 12, all the way down into your Genesis cells, your Kundalini. You get this magnetic flowering, and then you get this electrical energy that flows back up into the pineal gland. And then what happens is you get frequency coming from the Earth's grids up into your higher heart and then all the way up back through Stargate 12 into the God worlds. And then that frequency just runs up and down. Once it runs up and down, it catalyzes a, a stream of events and the whole human being changes like energetically. And that's when the healing takes place. But these spirals of code are what trigger it. Can you make people younger? You know what? Like the thing is this, like we're, we're running like a a system in our in our body you know the vesica pisces okay those two kind of overlapping spheres energy shuttles backwards and forwards and it's one of the reasons that we get older and we we pass on another reason is um lack of oxygen in in, in the blood when we really oxygenate our bodies and we change this vesica pisces model to a tri-wave by adding the third sphere the energy can circulate and actually what happens is frequency moves from the zero point out through the spheres and back again and it creates something called backflow return where the energy moves away and, and to the center point efficiently and it creates longevity. The other thing is the Merkaba field. When, when the Merkaba field spin in properly, the top tetrahedron clockwise and the bottom one anti-clockwise, you've got the staff, which is a vertical point uh, through, the, through the Merkaba and the rod, which runs horizontal. When the tetrahedrons are spinning correctly, the rod and the staff create torque and quantum energy. Again, it, it, it creates life force. Like our bodies aren't supposed to get old and and die. I mean, I'm 46 now and I, I look younger now than I did when I was about 40, you know? I mean, by do, from doing the work, I look younger. 
you know i i just have some gray hairs and stuff but you know like now they, they, they've started to like disappear and 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 go so and and i feel much younger you know so when you do this work absolutely we can be younger when you do the right breath work too the breath work's important you know and and and, and, and all of these things are important like you know intermittent fasting breath work early nights exercise eating clean um don't eat too much you know just all these things when you mix them all together run in the correct frequencies why would we ever get old mm -hmm. and what about programmable matter i know you talk about that creating organs lungs gallbladders and all of that new joints and bones in our body i'm sure lots of people are fascinated by that we're not taught this we're taught to use pharmaceuticals, to use surgery and Western thought methods. So what is it that you've seen around this or know around this? I mean, I, I watched a video, um, I watched a Joe Rogan podcast the other day with Billy Carson on it, talking mm -hmm. about programmable matter. The thing is we've been programming matter since we started Star Magic in 2016. We've been training people to do it. If you go to our website, you're gonna see people who had no lung and we've grown their lung back. Um, people that have had no thyroid and it's it's grown back. People that have got no kidneys, not what really bad kidneys, you know, that are on dialysis. They've been on dialysis, let's say, for, I don't know, five years, eight years, whatever is the carrying machines around with them. We do the work and, you know, we, we, we give them new kidneys. We've had people with no gallbladders that we've given them, that we've given them new gallbladders. So you can create matter with your intention. It's alchemy. Like the thing is, the physical is actually a, a, a knock-on effect of the of the metaphysical. So the building blocks of the physical world are actually the quantum. So when you go into the quantum and you start creating with the right intentions, with the right frequencies, we also work with um, multiple other beings. Like we've got a, a, a Pleiadian that we work with called Rina. Um, we've got these beings that we work with called Blue Devies. They're like these galactic butterflies. We've got um, beings that we work with underneath the pyramids in Egypt. You know, we'll take them down there. They'll cut people's bodies open and remove tumors. And some people are left with scars across their body. And we're, we're in a different country from them. So this stuff is real. It's happening right now. And we're all capable of doing it. This is the thing. Like we have people that have been to our training from eight years old to 98 years old. I mean, we're, we're in California about 18 months ago. And there was a lady, she had kyphoscoliosis, which is a twisted spine, and it was um, a double C shape as well. So kyphoscoliosis and scoliosis. Now, I asked anyone in the audience, who wants to volunteer to come and correct this lady's spine? And the only uh, soul that put his hand up was a little eight-year-old boy yeah. from Hawaii called Koi. He's an absolute little legend. And he came up to the front. There was like 80 people in the class. He's come up to the front and... Gregory, one of our team and, and, and myself, we've guided him into this process. And it was a really deep emotional process. The lady was crying. She was kind of screaming a little bit. It was very painful for her. And the little, the, the, the young lad, right? He was, he's working on this lady and he literally collapsed during the healing process. But I was on the floor, like looking up at him. So I scooped him up. What had happened, he, he'd gone back into an Andromedan reality where he knew this lady, their souls had had a connection. Um, so, and, and it was so intense energetically, it just kind of got wiped out. So I was holding him in my arms saying, you're right, bro, you know, and, and sort of getting him back round. I stood him back up once he opened his eyes and he continued with the healing. And this lady's spine corrected. We've got all of the, 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 the um, scans from before and after. You can go to the website, starmagichealing.org, listen to her testimonial and, and see the scans and, and watch the little boy at work. So these things are happening. You know, and, and, and it's not hard. We make it so simple, you know. Um, again, like people say, people talk about, you know, uh, quantum healing and distance healing. They make it out to be so complicated. It's not complicated at all. It's just about breaking it down and making it simple. And again, it comes back to this complexity versus simplicity. What road do you want to choose? I don't want to choose the hard road, even though uh, many times in my life I have done. I want to choose the easy road. And the way that we've kind of broken down healing, we make it very easy. So programming matter is not hard. People take their hearing aids out. We were doing an, Amer an American tour last year. We had a lady with uh, multiple sclerosis. And the doctor said, so you're never going to walk again. So she, she comes to the... Um, to the group healing in Miami. Her husband pushes her into the room and that. 
at the end of the first day, I try and stand her up and that, and she's struggling a little bit, but she's really trying. On the second day, maybe around lunchtime, she gets up out the wheelchair and she walks 30 meters to the toilet. She goes to the toilet. We, 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 one of our staff came with her, one of the facilitators, waited outside. She gets back up. She walks back into, in, in, into the room. We had another lady in Canada, on our, uh, Canada, America tour last year. I can't remember how old Lind Linda is, maybe 72, 73, major diabetes, not walked for like 12 odd years. First day of the group healing, she gets up and walks up and down the room. The next day when she came, she walked from the car into the building, all the way down the corridor, up the lift and into the group healing room. Everyone was cheering, you know, it was amazing. Like seeing the smile on her face and the sparkle in her eyes. So this is happening. You know, we're creating such a powerful frequency in our group healings and it's just changing people. It's shifting them at such a deep level. This is amazing. As you're saying this, I don't even know if you can hear it, but there's literally some kind of helicopter right over the house. And it like was amplifying everything you were saying, making it beautiful and intense. Uh, is there a darker side to healing? What about the not so light side of healing? What is that? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually made a video about this uh, a few weeks ago and put it on YouTube because so many people ask questions about this. I mean, we deal with some of the real nasty stuff. So um, SRA, satanic ritual abuse. You know, I've worked with um, ladies that um, ladies from the Amish community that which was infiltrated by the Nazis years ago. And so like the, the heaviness in there is intense. This I, I've worked with ladies that have, have, have been bred um, to have babies. So they'll get they'll be gotten pregnant. And then what happens is say six, seven months old, they cut the baby out from the womb, stick it on a, a barbecue and cook it. And then they make the woman eat it and other people eat it. Yeah, I mean, and they, they, they do this over and over and it's, it's, it's nasty. I've worked with, I, I, I was working not too long ago with a, a very famous um, pop star's uh, cousin. And when she was a child, they used to take her into this chiropractic, ch chiropractic clinic owned by some very famous people. And um, it's actually it's been knocked down and demolished now. But when they used to take her in there, they used to take her into the basement. They used to cut open uh, the sides of her body and um, put like tubes in the, in, in the lungs. And then men would put their penises in her mouth. And so she wouldn't be able to breathe only through the hole in here. They string her up by cattle hooks, um, all sorts of crazy stuff. Like that. if you go to our website, there's a lady on our website. She was in a, in a, um, in a Masonic lodge, two, three years old, playing with a little boy. And um, I think it was her dad cut the little boy's head off in front of her. And then she was taken over. She was, she was put in a, a coffin with snakes and spiders down in the ground, buried for two days, taken out, raped by 30 or 40 men, like horrendous stuff. You know, like this is the real darker side of, of healing. And, um, you know, because of my past and my reality and what I've experienced as a child, I've been through some of this stuff. So um, I feel that it was, it, you know, one of the reasons that I came into all of this stuff to help people in these darker, deeper situations. So, yeah, I mean, they that's ever just... recover. I mean, what you're talking about, that is just for me way beyond like, I don't know how do people ever come back from that? It's tough, you know, but, but there is a way and you've got, to, you've got to readjust people from the inside. So like we are, we are computer systems, right? If you take, if you, if you look at it with the analogy of being a computer, okay, the computer, <sighs> it runs, it runs programs. Now, some of these programs are positive. When things happen to a human, they take on board viruses. Now, if we can go into the person's biological computer and take out those viruses, then the computer, the computer can start to function properly, think correctly, feel correctly. It's not always an easy ride. You might have to work with some of these people for, for a few months. You know, some there, there's a that lot of- all? Um, I would think years, decades, really. I mean, there, there are some people that it might take longer, yeah, but star magic's a little bit different. You know, we, 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 it's a different kind of healing frequency and it really does get in there. 
and what the, the the lady who's um who watched the little boy's head got cut off. I mean, I, I think I only did three healing sessions with her, and she was back on track. Oh my god! But you know, there's other people that I've worked with for months. You know, you get other kind of scenarios which are based around artificial intelligence. And this is where it gets really nasty. And in, in one way it's less nasty because it's not physical. They've not been raped and abused, but at the same time, it's, 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 it's harder to deal with. So you get men that will go and watch um, pornography. So pornography is, is, is a huge problem on the planet, you know, and, and, and when people masturbate, they're handing their power over, they're, they're, the energy is shooting out the body and all that, that, that energy is getting siphoned off by negative beings. I mean, they, the, the, the negative beings are diving down through the crown when they're having that kind of orgasm, all different things. But you get men that go to porn sites and they'll get programmed in the porn site by certain codes that are in the screen. And what happens is it, it triggers something in, in the base of the cranium in the back of their head. And it and it creates this kind of program. And when people go to sleep at nighttime, what happens is they go into this kind of um, it's like a bad dream. It's like their worst fears come up and they cannot get out of it. And they're like it all night. I was working with a guy that this happened to. And once it happened every night around 10 p.m., a satellite would come around outside his apartment block and start playing around with the codes in the back of his neck. He was sleeping in a Faraday cage. It was getting through the Faraday cage. It, it was nuts. And when I went into work on him, I opened up the back of his, his neck and it was like the most futuristic, crazy safe that you've ever seen. I think it took us like two months to go in and try and break the, the programs in that safe to undo this program. This gentleman, he actually was researching about these programs and stuff, and he found a doctor um, in America uh, that told him on a Facebook message that he was partly responsible for inventing these programs. And the best thing he could do is to get a gun and put it in his mouth and shoot himself. So there's people out there that are getting programmed like this, searching out for help, coming up across people that are supposed to help them and they're just being told to kill themselves. And then obviously all those entities are there feeding off of all of that trauma. So again, it's just part of the program. I was working with a, a, a quite famous guy in Romania and one day he started hearing voices in his head and it was um, these kind of like high-end police or some kind of military. They had these computer programs and they were talking to him in his head through some kind of computer. They were tapping away on a screen and they said to him, listen, we're on a mission at the moment. You're one of our guinea pigs. We're getting everybody addicted to pornography. And like, so, you know, they said, if you tell any, anyone about this, we're going to kill you. Obviously he reached out for help because he was desperate, you know? There's all sorts of crazy things when it comes to the darker side of healing. Yeah. And, and I don't like to focus on it, but it is it is a part of our reality. And um, we need more people that can help people deal with this stuff. I have a question. So here you are and here are the facilitators you train and you're all very good at this and helping folks like this. But what about the perpetrators? And I, I, I mean, this is really hard to hear a lot of this uh, for me anyway, but I, I also would love to see it stop. And that's only going to happen when they get help. So is there any way maybe to ask their higher self, would they be willing to be healed, helped, go to the light, that sort of thing? And maybe those souls that say, yes, yes, I would like that, that even remotely they could be worked on, even as a group energy. Well, a, a, lot, a lot of these beings have been a lot of the beings that control this stuff have been taken and quarantined and taken off planet. The kind of hierarchical beings, I don't even want to say their names because I don't even like, you know, speaking their names into reality. Um, because again, it's a program, you know, and you can, you can create energy with that program. So a lot of these hierarchical beings have been quarantined, taken off planet, but a lot of the interdimensional beings that are on the darker side at the moment, this chaos, because when the, when, when the hierarchical beings were here, there was a little bit of order. Now there's chaos. So what's happening is a lot of these interdimensional beings are fighting for energy. They're fighting for, for their little bit of glory and power. So at the moment, we're going through a bit of a chaotic time. 
And that's why it's really important for us, you know, to really open our hearts, clean these grids, run the frequencies, expand our consciousness and unify as a human collective because separation and isolation is what keeps us small and, um, and weaker. When we, we, we amplify our own frequency and step into that kind of unfuckwithable mindset, that kind of spiritual gangster, God, goddess um, heart set, you know, we, 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 we become untouchable. But it takes a little bit of work to get there and alchemizing the shadows and the light, bringing the dark and light into equilibrium is a massive part of the process. But even in human form, there are many um, other entities that have been working these programs. And um, a lot of them have been brought to justice, but it's a big, big, big thing, you know, so and, and more of them come as some of them leave. But we're making headway. You've just got to think the expansion of consciousness on planet Earth at the moment. There's so many more people waking up. There's still a long way to go, but there's so many more people waking up. And even if you go back to COVID, like COVID was beautiful because it got so many humans all over the world to prioritize, look in their heart and realize what was important. And all of the stuff that they were doing, this fast paced, crazy lifestyle, you know, stand on the other man to get up the ladder stuff. That's all is starting to dissipate. People are realizing that unity, love, kindness, compassion, you know, empathy, like coming together as brothers and sisters where it's at, not thinking, oh, well, I'm better than you. And I don't want to tell you about all my, about my healing modality because you might steal some of my stuff. Like we have to really come together. The spiritual community is one of the places is that is the most separated because what they've done with this new age movement is created all of these different subsections. And so they've divided the spiritual movement, new age movement, whatever you want to call it into so many different facets, but really, and truthfully, we're all on the same mission. So what we've got to do is, is just drop that ego, come into our heart and just start loving the heck out of each other mm. and just try to support each other everything that we've got and if we come together that's it we can shift you know this human species rapidly in hours maybe days but it takes a lot i always think to myself imagine if we could get everyone in the world to smoke a dmt pipe at the same time <laughs> drink ayahuasca at the same time get the right medicine on. into people Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm down for that. That is, inc I agree. I thought, what if you could get governments in a room in a ceremony and do ayahuasca, do, do wachuma, right? Do a heart opener. I mean, there's so many beautiful plants with wisdom that could really help. Um, so when you create that, bring me along this, I will help facilitate. I want to ask you, I know, Jerry, that you channel which is amazing. You do light language and you channel. Um, would you be willing, if we switch gears here, to do some channeling for the audience? Yeah, absolutely. I think what's really important, I, I like to just touch upon this because I don't really like to say that I'm channeling. You know, I'm, I'm connecting to a frequency and it's a frequency that I've spoken before because I've been incarnated in these kind of races and, and on these planets where I've spoken this stuff before. So it's easy to connect to. I think channeling, it can be good, right? But people have got to be really sensible when they're doing it because not everybody can handle it. When you bring in an, an entity, even if it's positive through your own system, it changes your DNA. It changes you at a molecular level and not everybody can handle those types of frequencies. And also when you're inviting beings through your body to channel, if you open yourself up to that, you've really got to know what you're bringing in because it's very easy if you just allow something to come in without checking it, another entity can slide in and amongst that and you can get yourself in a bit of trouble. So I think it's always really good for people to use discernment when they are either contemplating, channeling or thinking about it, you know, just use that degree of, of, of discernment. It's very important. Good. Thank you. And I'll just say, while you're getting prepared, you on your website, you have two sample light languages that are accompanied by sacred geometry. And so they're audios. And I listen to both. One of them I listened to on a loop. And the first one that I stared at the sacred geometry, I saw frog people. I saw bear people. I saw bird people. It was really beautiful. I don't often see anything other than sacred geometry in sacred geometry. And then in your second audio, Jerry, I understood some of what you were saying. And I was literally hearing you say words like, 
Anasazi and Liren. And there were other words. And I was just like, wow, because I've heard tons of light language and I've never understood anyone, although I can receive the energy. So that was very interesting to me. That's cool. And, and, and for anyone that's about to listen to this at home, don't try and understand what I'm trying to share with you. Just allow yourself to be present and absorb the frequencies into your body, into your cells. And what will happen is your cells will, will take on board the information and then you will start to know what it means. And then that knowing will become like a logical piece of information. But if you try and intellectually understand it from the get go, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you got to feel it, you know? Okay, cool. So if you just want to close your eyes, just be in this space for a moment and just become present. Just breathe into your body. Breathe in through your nose, all the way down to the pit of your stomach and back out slow. And just be here now, melt into this moment and just absorb these frequencies. Tiria shaku iri anashiri amatua tiaria. Kiu atuku shakatu shiri atata. Iri amatari amashari atu ushaka ka 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 ka. Shu iri ash zia matari eno. Tui ataka. Shu katamatu iri ataka. Shakatakata kiu i shu. Ari mutu muri ashakara. Si ari amatu ari. Eta ari emu. Ari ashana shari amokuria. Si ari amashekia. Asha una ara ia. Nari amatriuku. Si ashakatakata. Tiu. Shiu. Shakatakatu. I ari ashekiu atamutu kiri. Enu sharaku. Era Nariamaturukia, Sriesh, Asha Ana Ariamatuk Ut Aria Diriamata. Whenever you're ready, open your eyes, come back into this space, and just be. Feel your body, be in this space. Mm, thank you so much much wow that was really amazing Whew. um integrating ancient wisdom and extraterrestrial knowledge i understand that you have a connection with mapacho for health and for healing can you explain how you use mapacho in healing yeah 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 so mapacho is a sacred tobacco and what we do is we we get this sacred tobacco from, from some specific tribes and we mix it with sage, rose, mugwort, a few different kind of natural herbs. And we make our own kind of unique blend out of it. My son actually makes it. He 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 makes it and, and sells it and he sells it at our ceremonies. He sells it on our website and a lot of the tribe use it for ceremonial purposes. And um, it's a beautiful sacred medicine. I mean, if you're on Aya, if you're on mushrooms, if you're on San Pedro, you know, depending on the medicine that you're you're you're, you're utilizing, I mean, mapacho is great. I mean, it can calm you, it can balance you, it can take you deeper. Sometimes it's quite nice just to have poor meditation, but you have to use it in a way that is sacred. You know, it's not like I'm just going to smoke a mapacho. It's not like you know. I mean, I don't smoke weed. I don't like it. You know, it messes me up. I mean, there's some, some people that love it, but it's, it's not my bag. But it's not like you just walk around smoking it all day. It's something that you just have as a sacred medicine for a sacred purpose. You'd set your intentions. You'd connect with it just like you would with any medicine. And uh, and you'd smoke it. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Can't hear you. What's new for you? What What is it that you haven't shared yet, but is on the horizon, either you're learning about, you're venturing into, your, what is brand new exploration for you, Jerry? Quite a few things, actually. I mean, on, on a physical level, um, we're, we're obviously building our healing, first healing center in Romania at the moment. We're just uh, getting planning permission. So hopefully we should, get, should break ground next year. 
um, and get that built, which is going to be amazing. It's going to be the first of 13. It's built on a, a beautiful, sacred piece of land with a portal. We've got ETs coming in and out. I mean, the whole place is going to be built out of the same frequency that we heal people with or facilitate the healing of people with. The the, the actual main ceremony and training rooms, multi-dimensional mock-up of yours, a 12-pointed start, unbelievable. Um, so yeah, that's in, in, in the process. Um, I've been working a lot recently, um, with these cosmic grandfathers and I was taken up to, to meet them, um, massive beings. And they've been sharing with me how important it is to embody the grandfather frequency because on planet earth, the, the, the women, the, the feminine, they mature so much faster than the men. So the divine father can't actually support the divine mother, but the divine grandfather can support the divine mother. So it's the grandfather energy men really need to embody right now to support the feminine in this global awakening. Because men, I mean, there are some men that are mature and I'm not saying this is all men, but most men. So what I'm focused on at the moment is anchoring this grandfather energy uh, in, 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 into myself and the planet. In August this year, I'm going on a little bit of a mission. I've got to go to 13 different countries to lay these um, these grid points through the planet. It's a, it's, it's a new grail line for the seventh dimension. So I'm going to be working on that in August, going and taking crystals and these cosmic eggs and running them through the grail line and anchoring them into the planet, doing my work and preparing that ready for the divine mother to bring the frequency through because the, 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 the masculine has to support the feminine. You know, we're, we're, we're launching a new workshop in two weeks called the savage man. It's our first ever all men workshop. And it's literally geared towards breaking these men down and rebuilding them so that they can become kind calm compassionate savage men that savage is important that hunter gatherer mindset you know uh, those men that just won't take any shit those men that will stand up and, and 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 fight not necessarily physically but if it ever came to that then yes but just stand in their truth stand in their wisdom and stand there and support the the, the feminine a lot of feminine will say well, we know we don't need the masculine to support us but actually it's a it's it's a it's, it's a it's a role that has to be fulfilled by the masculine and feminine. Now, the masculine and feminine can be alchem alchemized internally within each human. But when you get divine sacred couples that come together and they've owned all of their stuff and they've got themselves into a great space, that's what's going to help change the planet. These kind of alchemical relationships where they're in complete equality, complete equilibrium. And a woman is very magnetic. A man is very electrical and the woman is there to create the woman. And I'm not just talking about get, having babies and all that sort of stuff. And some women jump all over this topic, you know, but the thing is the woman is magnetic and the woman needs to be in safety. She needs to be in protection because the woman doesn't need to go and do stuff to create stuff. The man is electrical and the man has to go out and do things and make things happen. But the man also has to provide for the woman. But when the man provides for the woman, the woman can support the man. So it's a dual effort. It's not like the woman's back cleaning and she's in the kitchen and she's got to do all this woman stuff. But no, it's not like that at all. It's that the woman is so powerful, so sacred, and the man has to honor and respect that. So we have to remind men that they have this honor and this mission to really respect and honor the divine feminine and support the divine feminine so she can be magnetic and help create heaven on earth and it's a it's just a partnership you know it's not something that the woman can go and do on their own it's not something the man can do on their own it's something that has to be an alchemical uh potion you know a cauldron a soup of magic that comes together that electrical and magnetic and so we're bringing these men through this savage man training um we're going to be really going like, you know, into meditation. We'll be doing breath work. We'll be doing ayahuasca, we'll psilocybin. We're going to be teaching them how to box. We're going to be putting them in the ring. They're going to be sparring with each other. Like we're going to break them down on every level. Circuit training, runs in the forest, ice baths. We're literally going to hammer them from all angles, break them down and rebuild them. 
and then at the end of it we're doing medicine as like a like a treat you know it's some even deeper healing so yeah I, i'm really looking forward to that you know to to see what happens you know it's gonna be it's, it's a new thing so I, I i love getting my teeth into new things you know and just seeing where it leads us oh to be a fly on the wall <laughs> that sounds really amazing and thank you and i can vouch as a woman everything you said are what i desire so um <clears throat> yeah i have no fallacy about that the safety the protection it makes a big deal excuse me and it allows me to be me it allows me to be soft but powerful and that's really who i am anyway so i get balanced i know jerry you are speaking on the celebrity cruise in december can you talk about that yeah so um it'll be, it'll be the first time i've been on a on one of these kind of like um spiritual cruises so i think we're starting in orlando how many days is it debbie it's like 10 or something. I can't remember exactly. Maybe nine or 10 days. And there's a, a whole bunch of awesome speakers that are coming together to literally deliver workshops whilst we sail from island to island, stop in, experiencing the culture, chatting, getting to know each other. It's going to be an awesome experience. I mean, we're going to be on a huge cruise ship and everyone's kind of going to be there just having so much time to to really kind of interact. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm excited about it. I actually did a, a podcast with Neil, who's organizing it a couple of days ago and had a really good chat with him. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to meeting all you guys and yeah, just seeing where it leads us and whoever turns up to be a part of it, you know, we're going to bring the, bring the magic and, you know, just come with an open heart and just, just be ready to transform and shift. Yeah. <clears throat> Forgive me. <clears throat> Cough. But I'll get these facts out, darn it. <clears throat> Celebrity Cruise, <laughs> December, Yucatan. Galactic Origins is the subject. We're at sea for seven days. So <clears throat> the presenters are Jerry, Sarah Breskman Cosme, Laura Eisenhower, Dr. JJ Hurtak, myself, JK Ultra, Debbie Solaris, Vivian Chavez, Lori Spagna. Ellen Seinfeld, Neil Gore, and more. Folks, you need to secure your cabin. I think you only have till September or when the cabins sell out. So please go ahead. It's not just the cruise, which is awesome. And the presentations, phenomenal. But additionally, you're gonna have great land excursions to sacred sites, to Belize, to Honduras, to Mexico, to Tulum, Cozumel. And if you bring a friend, there's a special discount. So there is a link below in the show notes so you can join us at galacticoriginscruise.com. <clears throat> Jerry, it has been wonderful to catch up with you and I hope to do so again in the future. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Debbie. It's a pleasure, sister. Yeah. Pleasure. And again, his website is starmagichealing.org. And I end today's show with this quote. When Albert Einstein met Charlie Chaplin in 1931, Einstein said, what I admire most about your art is its universality. You do not say a word and yet the world understands you. It's true, replied Chaplin, but your fame is even greater. The world admires you when no one understands you. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the Dare to Dream podcast. Please share it with folks. You help us when you leave a comment and like. Next week on the show, my friend is coming back. This is at least her third time. Debbie Solaris will be here. ET contactee, interdimensional traveler, and phenomenal galactic historian. Folks, don't just dare to dream. Dare to create all your dreams into your reality. Thanks for joining us today.